stand together and we're going to read uh, Romans 13 and 1 through 7. Romans 13, 1 through 7. Everybody who's here tonight and those who are, have read the uh, bulletin today just knew that I was going to preach about the government because of what happened on Wednesday. But I want you to know I already started on this last Monday. So it had nothing to do with the thing, but it's because we are following the scripture, Romans chapter 13. I hope it'll be a help to you. This will be part one as we move along in this great chapter with Brother Paul. Now, Paul is writing to Rome. He's not writing exactly to America or anybody else at this period of time, and you'll hear me say a few words about that in a moment, but it has implications for all Christians because he's writing to the church. He's not writing to the pagans, really, about uh, being subject to the, to the government. But you follow along here as we share together. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of good to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon them that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues... Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And may God bless this word. You may be seated and let's pause for prayer. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We first of all want to lift up these who we mention in special prayer and those some are at the point of death. Raise them up, Lord, according to your will for them. May they know the peace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I truly pray that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. And then, Father, tonight as we look into the government, the civil authorities, the government of the land, the place where we live, and the Christian. Uh, Brother Paul is speaking to the church, the Christians. And so we are to be different from any other, we have an obligation not only for the wrath of the government, but for the conscience sake, to have a good conscience before you, God. You're first above all powers. And help us to know that and realize it. Now speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Christian and the government, Romans 13. Several years ago, the leaders and government of Vietnam were on a roll. They persecuted Christians, and they planned to go and find who were believers in Jesus in villages, cities, and towns, and they'd take the men out of the families. They would take them to the prison or dungeon or whatever it was. There to torture them, beat them. And make them reject the Savior, the Lord Jesus. What did they do? We will not renounce, deny, reject the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Who does that sound like? Sound like Brother Paul and the guys, doesn't it? Sounds just like the first century. A lot like it. And it goes on at this hour, may I tell you. So, Brother Paul, I want you to remember here, he's writing to the believers in the church of Rome. All right? Not writing to pagans and the heathen, those who are against God. Who is in control of the government of Rome? 
His name is Nero. Have you ever heard of that name? Some of you have. You read your history. The fifth emperor of Rome. Now, Rome has become a mighty empire. They rule by military might. They rule by the sword. And now they are under a demon-possessed leader. Think of this. In around 64 A.D., Nero wants his name to be known. He wants to leave a legacy throughout Rome as being the greatest emperor. So he wants to make beautiful buildings and architect. You know, Rome could, they had some of the greatest architect. But in his mind, he wanted to go down as the greatest. So what he would do with certain areas of the city, he'd burn them. Doesn't it sound like today, does it? He set them on fire. He'd get people to do that. And guess who he picked out to blame? See, you always have to have somebody to blame. The word was getting out, Nero is burning our city. And you know, if it goes from one to the other, not the Christians, and they weren't really, con- they didn't have much control anyway. There was few of them, but they were doing for the kingdom of God. These other people, we're talking about other leaders and all, we're talking about Nero. He said, they've got to do something. So he said, guess who is around us? They're all mixed up, the Christians. We can just use them as a scapegoat. So instead of burning in the cities, he'd burn your own poles. I'd find Lisa and Chad and the whole family and we'd set them afire, hang them up on poles in gardens, down the streets, wherever it might be. See what kind of society it is? Fast forward to 2021. How are we as a church, believers in Jesus, going to relate to the state, the government? Are we going to disobey the law or obey it? We're going to riot and rage? Or are you going to restrain and relate to the laws of the land as guided by Almighty God in His Word? Now, God expects the genuine believer to live as a testimony of righteousness, doing what is right in the sight of God and as a citizen on the earth. Here, number one, what did the Bible say? Now, always keep in mind, Brother Paul is writing to the church in Rome. You got to think of that in your mind. But it will relate to us. Okay? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Be subject is to submit to the civil authorities. Paul uses the high power powers, these are the governing authorities. Heads of state, be presidents, prime ministers, all would be what we call the executive. For us, we got executive, judicial, and legislative branches of government. Now, in some places, you've got these army generals. Others, you have groups of leaders. Maybe one has more power than the other. If you've got three in charge, one usually takes over. Then you've got dictators. He runs the whole thing. Now, the authority and power can be just or unjust. They can abuse power or use power wisely. But what are we supposed to do as the Bible says? Brother Paul said, you to obey or to submit to the authorities. Now, notice carefully. Stay with me here. The government of the land, civil authority, only has a certain sphere of authority. Are you following what I'm saying? A certain area, a certain circle, you might say. Just picture in your mind a circle. And then a mighty large circle. Who is over the whole mighty circle of all things? Almighty God, you see? He requires first place, first honor. He overrides all powers because he's full of all power. He's given the power. To man, to do government. Now, they're only in charge 
of a certain portion. They do not supposed to go beyond their position. Let me give you some illustrations here. Let's go back to the home. In Ephesians 5 and 6, Brother Paul wrote about marriage. You remember that? Wives, submit. And all you get, if I'd go through that with a, a couple getting married, they say, I am not going to obey my husband. I'm saying the Bible said submit to your own husband. Now, they are not to obey that husband as a master or a king. He is a husband. You see? Children. Obey, obey your parents and the Lord. Submit to your parents. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Not as a ruler, a dictator. That's not what he said. Brother Paul was writing to help the family. So here with the government. When the laws of civil government conflict with the commands of God, then we've got to say with the early disciples, Brother Peter, you remember they put him in the prison in Acts chapter 3? The man was at the gate, the lame man, and he said, cast your eyes upon me. And he said, be healed, rise and walk. Remember that? Well, they got fired up. The religious crowd got fired up. The Jewish leaders said, we're going to take you to the civil court and we're going to take care of this. So... They sent the troops to get them, put them in the prison house. Remember? In Acts 25, 29, so where they beat them a while and didn't let them go. Peter and the boys said what? We must obey God rather than man. Exactly. Now, follow what I'm saying. Peter and the boys are not against the governor authorities. They're just saying you're taking in, you're taking the wrong position as authority. You don't do that with the kingdom of God's work like that. They are not in a divine right to do that. Why? Because their authority is given by God. Rulers are not to trespass on territory that does not belong under their jurisdiction, for example. Now, Christians of the church, we say yes to things under civil matters that do not conflict with the commands of God. Here's about praying for kings. You have to write these several verses down. I, I either I'll get it with Matt later and having to put them on the, the website or whatever. First Timothy chapter 2, 1 and 2. Titus, that's 1st and 2nd Timothy, then a little letter of Titus, Brother Paul wrote. Titus 3, 1, we'll quote that later. 1st Peter chapter 2, and you can put a circle around 1st Peter. Peter had the same thing going on. He's about the same time as Brother Paul as he wrote to the, uh, to the Romans in the 60s A.D. of 1st century. And Brother Peter's in another place. He is experiencing the same thing, and he has the same heart about God and the government. Now, secondly, the government is ordained. This is still in verses 1 and 2. You'll see that. It's established by God. You see that? No power but of God. God gives the power. The powers that be are ordained of God. They sit apart. They are established by God. He brought them about. That's why they exist. By the will of God, the government exists. Persons allowed to be put in authority. Now, think of these different forms of government. Monarchy. That's undivided rule by a single person. Oligarchy. Ruled by just a few. A republic. This is the government that has supreme power residing in the body of citizens, entitled to vote, exercised by elected officers and representatives responsible to them to govern according to the law. We're part of a republic. Then you got democracy. It's part of us too. government by the people, 
for the people, you know, especially the rule of the majority. And sometimes that majority can be in the wrong. A minority could be in the right, but the majority is rules in a democracy. The supreme power vested in the people, exercised by them directly or indirectly through the system of representation where we hold free elections for them. Now, God has allowed and brought a form of government into being. How is it considered to be brought in being? Watch it. Through the makeup of people. What kind of makeup is in America? What kind of value system? What kind of beliefs? What kind of teachings are going on in America? It's also the government that is allowed and brought into being is whether they have a certain degree of truth and light. Also, the moral conditions that prevail. Now, you could divide all that up into a lot of, a lot of study. Now, the Christian believer, we have little to do with the authorities in government, how they conduct their affairs. But we have a lot to do. We are responsible for how we behave as a citizen of the state. You follow that? Have responsibility. That's what Brother Paul is saying to the Roman Christians. Believers not to resist the government, for resisting equals resisting the ordinance of God. Now, Christianity is not confused with political movements. It's not focused on national government. Say, well, Christianity is under a national government. No. Jesus never involved himself in insurrections, rebellions against Rome. He was under the Roman authorities when he walked. He didn't stir up civil disobedience. As a Christ follower, we're not to identify with murdering, terrorism, fightings, bombings, destroying properties, or any other kind of of foolishness. There is an exception to resisting government. Rulers and leaders begin to exercise personal domination over human life. Peter and John, what did they say again? They led out of the prison. We must obey God rather than men because the government stepped over border and demanded that they not preach in the name of Jesus. Preaching in the name of Jesus has no government control over it. If they do, they step over the border of their authority. Christian, you follow after righteousness involving morality and justice. You base it on the scripture, word of God. Not man's making, not our own rights and thoughts about it. You have to be careful. World leaders are in God's hands. They're under sovereign rule of God. He works in the affairs of world leaders. Now, let's go back. You need to write this down. Matt didn't have that, so he would not have it on screen. Daniel chapter 2. Everybody, would you like to do that with me or just be sure to write it down? The prophecy of Daniel. Chapter 2. We did this when we went through the book of Daniel. <clears throat> now Daniel was taken to pagan, heathen land of Babylon. He had many, many gods and he said, no, I will stand for the Lord God of Israel. The true God of heaven who created all things. Now, listen to what he said after Nebuchadnezzar gave him that, that great dream and he said God would give it to him. Daniel 2, 19 through 23. Then we're going to look at another passage in that chapter. 
Daniel 2, 19. Then was the secret reveal, revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings. Do you see that? And setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and the knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Daniel 2, 46 and 47. What does a pagan, lost, heathen king say? 46, 47. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation, the offering, and a sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth... It is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Isn't that a great God? That's a God to Daniel. And he stayed with Daniel. Daniel stayed with God. The Lord God Almighty. Everlasting God. Listen. Do not be despairing. Almighty God can take the failure, foolishness, and evil of nations, whatever nation, and work things out for good to those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. That is to know Jesus. Believers who resist the authorities can be condemned. Now stay with me. Don't get mixed up here. Look at the word. We're back now in Romans 13. They that resist, this is the end of verse 2. Romans 13, 2. They that resist shall receive to them damnation. That word is judgment. The idea is that a disobedient believer will have to face the judgment of God if he disobeys the just laws of the land. A believer is not exempt. If he's caught breaking the laws of the land, he's got to be punished. Now, most of you are pretty good drivers, aren't you? I know some around here who break the law a lot of times. Do you know that? I'm talking about driving, driving the highways. And I break the law sometimes. Now, let's suppose this. You're cruising down Interstate 26. If science says 65, now I know there's 65, there's 70. Uh, sometimes you've got to drop 55. Don't you just hate that? You're, you're driving, you got it set on 65 or 70, and then right up there it says 55, and there's nothing going on. You're trying to figure out what's happening. But I slow down. I might not get to 55, but I pretty much slow down somewhat. All right, we're going 65. That's what the sign says, correct? Well, I set it on cruise 65, and I noticed people zooming by me. I said, well, they're doing it. Why can't I do it? So I take it off the cruise, and I mash the pedal, and I go 68, 70, 72, 75, 78, 80. Now I'm just sitting back going, man. I'm just enjoying. And there's still some folks near me. They're still coming with me. And now I look in the mirror. There are blue lights flashing. Oh, what did I say? Well, I say, well, I'm going to, to 85 because I don't care about blue lights. Get what I'm going to say? 
No. I'm fearful now because I'm already, I'm done. I'm caught. So I pull off. He pulls behind me. It's a state policeman. He comes up to my door. He says, um, sir, are you having a great day? I says, I just wanted to commend you for driving so excellently. And then he looks at my license and he says, you're from the state of Virginia. Are you going home? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I want you to have a good trip. Do you think he's going to say that? No. No, he's not going to say that. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to do this. May I see your license and your registration? He takes it. He doesn't tell me thank you for it. He just takes it. He goes back to his car. And I see him mashing buttons on a computer, computer screen. He's checking out my license, my registration. Checks all of my been put in jail or whatever. He's going to find out who Donald L. Page is. And if this license is telling the truth. And then he's going to come up to my car because he's already has something in his hand called a ticket. He's going to stick it in my hand and say, pay the fine or be in court on a certain day. Now, you see the picture? He is a law officer of the government, of the state authority. He's given that authority. He's an agent of justice. He is to punish wrongdoing. That's what he is. And that's what he's going to do. Now, Let me see where I'm at. <clears throat> now, not only Paul to the Romans, but Peter speaks in his letter, 1 Peter 2. That's why I, meant, I think I mentioned that a while ago. 13 and 14, here's what he says. Submit yourselves to every ordinance for the Lord's sake, whether to king as supreme or unto governors as them sent by him for punishment of evildoers, for the praise of them that do well. Now, thirdly, government is ordained to promote good and restrain evil. Rulers are given authority to restrain evil. That is, hold back, resist it, restrict it, but not good works. Civil authorities and laws are for all people. Now, we say tonight we're part of the religion called Christianity. I can do what I want to. No, you can't. Or a Muslim, or Hindu. Or Jew? No. Doesn't matter what religion you are, you're still under the civil authority, the laws of the land where you are. Race? Doesn't matter. Red, yellow, black, and white. All are precious in his sight, but you're still under the law of the land. Whatever region you live in, whatever position of life you have, you can be executive of a, a great business. Be a CEO of a great company, or you can be a smaller person in society, road worker, whatever you consider to be in a certain position of life. Doesn't matter. You're still under the authority of the state and the law. If you do well, you're fine. If you do wrong, you're to be punished. Christians, we ought to respect the state, the government. 
It doesn't mean we agree with everything. Everything said, done, or legislated, some law made, that's, that's not the point. Remember, we are representatives of a holy God. You follow of Jesus? You respect the law. Hopefully they'll do what is good and right. But maybe they don't sometimes. We need to help build up the righteousness and truth wherever we live. So we want to stand as good citizens. Remember your greatest citizenship. Where is it? Here? Uh-uh. Your greatest citizenship is here in heaven. You're citizens of heaven as a Christian. And prayerfully down here we ask the Lord to help us live in peace. Now just think. If it were not for Rome, we're going back to Rome now, Brother Paul, the apostle. If it were not for Roman authorities setting up great infrastructure, we're talking about bridges and buildings and roads were made for travel, for a commerce, for trading, for many places. That was one of the great things of the Romans. And without government doing that, guess what? They'd be still going over hills and down in dark valleys and and they couldn't couldn't make it some places. Couldn't cross rivers maybe and all. These are great, great um, architects and engineers, I guess you may call them at that time. And Brother Paul and the disciples, Peter, James, and John, all of them used that. It was a blessing to travel. Even with tyrant, we say evil leaders. The Bible says in Titus 3, 1, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, that's rulers, authorities, to obey the magistrates and be ready to do every good work. So the power of evil and corruption is strong. And we know what happens when men live without law. It's called selfishness. It's called sinfulness, foolishness, anarchy. They lose their minds. It's a breakdown of law in cities, communities, in workplaces, or wherever. We have the slogan that's been going this year, defund police. We do not need law enforcement. That has nothing to do with uh, being a Christian. You should never be involved in such as that. Bring down a nation. Tear up this place, burn this place, destroy this. No, no, you, you better not be caught in that as a believer in Jesus. You have a higher authority. We do not go around and have self-declared rights to govern ourselves. That is not of God. The Bible said government set up to promote the good, restrain, put a hold on evil. That is the greatest calling of government. Rulers are to be ministers of God for good. Maintain the welfare of citizens and the safety. Believers shouldn't be going out breaking laws, stirring up civil authority, putting down the government. We may not like certain things about the government. We don't go fight against the government. We exist to maintain order. That's what their purpose is. <clears throat> now the believer should obey the state for conscious sake as well as fear of punishment. Look in verse 5. It needs to be subject not only for wrath, that is a government the judgment from the government, but also for conscience sake, that's fear of the punishment of God. See, we have a higher fear. Fear God. Two ways of conscience is involved. The Christian believer, God ordains the government, and that to resist the government would be resisting God's command. You can abuse your citizenship. You're abusing God's will for you. Violating the conscience. It's our conscience. We know what is right from wrong because God's put it there into our minds and hearts. 
A restful conscience can bring peace. A disturbed conscience can bring restlessness and pain. Paul said in Acts 24, 16, I always want to have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Peter, 1 Peter 3, 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation. That is the word citizenship in Christ. Now, what are you going to do? Remember now, there are limits. We're going to talk, pick up next week, some interesting things, verses 6 and 7. And we want to talk about that verse next time. Matt, you want to put that up at the end. Did you put that for me on the screen? Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And unto God, that which is God's, I think it's Matthew 22 and 21. Is that correct? Okay. All right. So let's just hold it right there. And we'll pick up next time. We keep moving. There it goes. You see on the screen? You'll find out some interesting things about that wonderful verse. Okay? But wait till next time. Let's bow in humble prayer. Father God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the word of God and for Brother Paul as he dealt with that Roman Empire. The Roman Emperor met much injustice and foolishness and hate toward the Christians. Brother Paul, he knew where his citizenship was. The greatest was in heaven because he loved the Lord Jesus. He would never turn away from him. And he pointed the people to Jesus. Jesus is Lord, no other. But he wanted to be in a place he, his own conscience told him about the government or the authorities of the land. So tonight, Lord, may we get a little glimpse of how we can better help our society, our country, our government. Help us to be faithful citizens of this great land. We know that you've given America. It's founded upon you. But help us to stay strong and to pray for all in authority. Now speak to our hearts now, O Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.